So recently I did a video on the cheapest CNC router on Amazon. It got me thinking, what is the cheapest laser engraver on Amazon and what is it capable of? Let's get it open and see what it looks like. All right, let's see what we got here. This is very well packed. So this is the JL3 engraving machine. All right, so I paid $99 for this on Amazon. Under $100, and this is what you get. And so let's let's get in here and see what we got. Oh, some safety glasses. That was not what I was expecting with the first box. And this is the actual laser itself. Packaged really well. Let's see what this thing looks like. Uh, this looks clean. Nothing is scratched. Like everything is packaged really, really well, which is one of the corners that they could cut really easily. For 99 bucks, you know, where do you put your money? And uh, they definitely put some time and effort into packaging. I'm going to finish getting all these pieces out of the box and then it's gonna be time to assemble. I'm always a little nervous when assembling these pieces because the instructions usually aren't that good. But let's see how this goes. All right, so I can already tell that this is gonna go fairly well. We've got a lot of pictures. These instructions are actually really, really good. All right, I'm gonna get assembling and then I'll let you know for sure. All right, so the laser is all assembled. I was really impressed with the instructions and the ease of assembly. And again, I bought this myself, so everything I'm saying here is just my opinion. No one's paying me for any of this. This is just my experience. I've assembled seven, eight, nine of these types of machines. And for this price point, for under $100, I was expecting to have to install like every nut and bolt. But under an hour, you can have this thing up and going. They even labeled the packages of all the nuts and bolts that corresponds with the instructions. So ease of assembly, this thing, I don't think it could be much easier. All right, so the next step is to get everything set up to be able to actually make things. Now, we're gonna be testing this out, like I said before, and see what it's capable of. I'm gonna try a couple different materials and go from there. One of the potential pain points with budget lasers like this is the software it needs to control it. So this particular laser comes with its own software. Rather than using Lightburn, um, which I normally use, I'm just gonna use what comes with it. That way we'll get a good representation of what actually uh, it does. So I learned this before assembling these types of machines. Don't just toss the thumb drive to the side like I did. There's actually a full six minute assembly video that really would even make it faster to assemble. You do need a computer or a laptop to control this laser, uh, but that's all you need other than what comes in the box. All right, so two things we need to do before we actually start carving. One, we need to set the focal height. This is a fixed focus diode laser. In the instructions here, it says to be six millimeters above the material that you're engraving. Six millimeters is just under a quarter of an inch. So if I stack two of these together, on top of the material that I am carving or engraving, that should be where the laser head is. The second thing that we need to do before we get started is make sure we have our safety goggles. Now on these lasers, there's a bunch of warnings all over. It's always a good idea to have glasses, but with lasers that don't have that protective um, area, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses, these stylish safety glasses. All right, so it just finished up and you can see the detail here. Now this is fairly dark and aggressive. I could have went a little bit lighter. Uh, overall, it took about a half an hour to cut this. Um, detail isn't super crisp, 
but I might be able to change that in the settings, but that's pretty impressive um, for the first test. Now let's do the second test. All right, so looks like it turned out really nice. Look at that. All right, so this one took about a half an hour as well, like 35 minutes. And here's for uh, scale. You can see there's my finger. And I increased the speed to 100%, but I increased the contrast. So you, you know how the other letters, uh, the first one I did was a little uh, rough on the edges. I increased the contrast and that seemed to really sharpen the image up. That looks really, really good. But what if you don't have any wood? Let's try a piece of paper here. Now I have no clue on the settings um, for the paper. I was at 100 and 100 on the uh, wood. And so I'm gonna go down to 50 and just see what happens. Well, that was really interesting. So it doesn't like the white. Maybe it's reflecting because at each blue dash here, it printed and then it I got off the paper here and it did on that too. All right, different color paper. All right, so this material came in the box. So just basically cardstock, card paper. Okay, my star was a little big. <laughs> it doesn't matter though. But it did engrave uh, on the paper and on the table, so you can see the perfect star. Um, if you were gonna use this thing a bunch, I would set up a jig where uh, you put your piece in every time and that way you knew where it was lining up, not just guessing like I am. I'm gonna do one more test with this paper. I'm gonna try to cut it, see if it'll cut this paper. I'm slowing down the cut speed to 50% and putting the power all the way up to 100. I don't know what's gonna happen. Ah. Oof. So I lit my paper on fire. It did cut it. Look at this. Got a star. So if you want some shapes, if you're going for the burnt singe look, then I recommend it. But the thing is, is that if you dialed in these settings, I'm sure you could cut this fairly well. Um, one of the main differences between budget lasers like this, budget diode lasers, and higher end lasers, say the Glowforge or uh, like those types of lasers, is the software. These budget lasers take a lot more time to dial in those speed settings to where the higher lasers have those preset and a lot of that stuff figured out for you. So one last test I wanna do is we need to see really how powerful this is. We've engraved, it is a engraving laser, but let's see how deep it can engrave. And so I'm gonna slow it way down and go full power and see the results that we get. All right, so this right here is 100% power, 10% speed. I learned you can actually speed it up as you go so I sped it up to 80 right here because obviously this was making a lot of smoke. Um, so I sped it up to 80 right here all the way. Now it's tough to tell, but I can get my fingernail in there, but that's like a 16th of an inch in depth. That's at 80%. I slowed it back down again right here and it's just, it's burning a little deeper, but obviously that's undesirable. It just makes, makes a mess. All right, after those four tests, I can safely say that this laser engraver is more than worth its money. 99 bucks, honestly, I am blown away at uh, its capability. From the ease of assembly, the detailed instructions, the quality of engravings that we're getting, and how everything comes, the only thing you need is to hook it up to a computer and you'll be engraving. This thing is by far one of the best values that I've seen, and I'm really surprised that it works as well as it does for the price point. So if you have any interest in laser engravers, 
and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I would say this is a safe bet. Now, just for engraving, you're not going to be able to cut anything. Again, remember our test for cutting didn't go so well, but this is marketed as a laser engraver, not a laser cutter. If you want to engrave things like barcodes or QR codes or just some simple art or um, some fun projects for the kids, I think this is a fantastic option for those things. Now, one thing I'm unable to test is the longevity of how long it works. I'm not sure what the life expectancy is of a laser like this. I used it for several hours today, four or five hours, and didn't have any issues. If you're gonna be using this at your house, just remember to have some sort of ventilation and make sure you wear these safety glasses that come with it. I'll have a link to this exact machine on Amazon in the description below if you wanna pick one up for yourself. If you wanna check out the video of the CNC router that I did a couple weeks ago, be sure to check that video out. That link will be in the description as well. Be a good comparison to compare the two. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.